Well, it's hard to watch. A case of excited delirium caught on police body cameras, showing a young man high on drugs and out of control. Well, tonight we're watching from an officer's point of view as they work to save that man's life and as he now faces the consequences. Now, if your phone or your computer is nearby, you might want to log onto the KXY4 Facebook page right now. We are live streaming, and the young man in the story will be online to answer your questions. You're about to see something that we typically don't get to see, but what's different about this overdose is what happened after the college athlete left the hospital. Tonight in the KXY4 Special Report, Jeff Humphrey shows us how new police training prevented a death and diffused what could have been an explosion of new racial tensions in our area. Jeff? And Eileen, that is why it's very significant. The star of this story is a young African-American man, but psychedelic drugs don't see color and affect our brains all the same way. We have all dealt with people who have partied too hard, so when your friend has the munchies, you call the Domino's pizza guy, but when your buddy's violently freaking out on acid, you have to call the cops. Did he break anything? There's a lot of stuff cops can control, but the way someone reacts to mind-bending drugs isn't one of them. What drugs did he take? So just around the corner, these patrolmen are going to have to deal with a guy backed up against a fence line, and they're not sure what's going to happen next. Hey, Terrence, Spokane Police, can you tell me what kind of drugs you took today? Do you know what kind? Officers don't know it, but Terrence is a nationally ranked collegiate wrestler, and now he's tripping on acid and mushrooms. So we got to get medics for you, all right? Nobody wants to hurt you. This is Officer Chris Johnson. He's using the de-escalation techniques he learned during his department's crisis intervention training. I'm in excited delirium here. People suffering from drug-induced excited delirium have racing heartbeats, their body rapidly overheating, their brain baking inside their skull. Hey. Calm down, calm down, take some deep breaths. Fighting with Terrence is only going to make his medical emergency worse, and so officers try to reason with him. Terrence, you don't want to hurt yourself. Bro. Nope, I know that. You got to stay here, though. By now, police have already called for paramedics and an ambulance. Can you just, can you just roll on your stomach? Because we don't, we don't want to fight you. You're too powerful for us. Officer Johnson tries to be patient, but Terrence is bleeding, sweating profusely, and the clock ticking down on whether doctors will be able to save him. What can we do, Terrence, for you to go on your stomach? I don't know. This is so powerful, bro. You are powerful. That's why we don't want to fight you. We need to get you over to the ambulance. We need to get you to the hospital to get you checked out. So now, eight minutes into the standoff, enough officers and medics are on scene to try to take Terrence into custody. We're going to have to grab you and roll you onto your stomach, all right? All right. You okay with that? But Terrence is not okay. Their tasers have no effect on Terrence. On your stomach! On your stomach! Stop resisting! And it's not until police use a lateral neck restraint that officers are able to cuff him and put their patient on a gurney. I know you do, Terrence, but you got to listen to these guys. Terrence is taken to a waiting ambulance where paramedics put a breathable spit shield over his face. What's your birthday, Terrence? Terrence has settled down, but as a precaution, Officer Johnson will ride to the hospital with him. You still don't remember what drug you took? Then, on the way to Holy Family... Terrence's heart stopped beating. I died twice in there, and I didn't even know I died. That night, Terrence McKinney may have also killed off his hopes of becoming an Olympic wrestler. Now, almost a year later, Terrence is still trying to live down what happened with Spokane Police. First of all, I want to thank you guys for taking the time out of the day to come give me a chance to apologize to you and give me a second chance at life so I can have a future. This is the first time Terrence has been in the same room with the officers who kept him from dying that night. A rare reunion between cops and their quarry. What I was thinking was that wrestling around with you for as long as we were, I didn't think you were going to make it. We could have cared less about what crime you committed, okay? All we wanted to do was get you care and then go from there.
At first, Terrence's apology is a hard sell. His overdose happened at the same time. White on black, officer-involved deaths were making big news across the country. When it happened was the heat of the Baltimore riots, the New York riots, everything else, the white police killing innocent black people. Had you died, all four of our pictures and Jay Scott would have been plastered all across the country and the world as cops that go out and kill innocent black people. It's kind of something you need to realize how close you were to, to bring that to this community. It was embarrassing watching parts of the video, but I also learned that one bad choice could cost you your whole life. It could be something that you can show to these kids that are doing this stuff and say, I took these things and this is what it did to me that night, one time. So use this as a tool for you to help other kids that are in your situation. The patrolman seems satisfied Terrence might actually spread the word about the dangers of illegal drugs. Their handshakes a sign that Terrence had regained their respect. And these officers didn't know it at the time, but Terrence was already, when he was offering his apology, Terrence was already out there using that body cam video to warn kids about the dangers of bad choices and drugs. He is one of the special guests making appearances in our high schools as part of the Spokane Police Department's Youth Police Initiative. We'll show you what that looks like and the powerful impact the program is having on teen police relations. That story is coming up in our next half hour, KXFI 4 at 630.